Hello, my name is Chris. I've worked years to get to this point. To build my reputation. To call myself a photographer. My special skill is framing things we can't see with our own eyes. It's over in the blink of an eye. With an ordinary camera and iron will to succeed, I will do everything I can to get the perfect picture. So this is my challenge. This is the high speed challenge. Hello and welcome to the last episode of the High Speed Challenge of Season 1. Well, I'm not sure at this point if I will make a Season 2, but um, if a lot of people are interested, um, I will make a Season 2. So this episode as a season finale is going to be something very special. Um, I want to show you how you can actually make a high speed trigger yourself. You can actually, you know, buy something like this, which is a high speed trigger, but you can also go to your local hardware store and, um, you know, get all the electronics that you need and some soldering skills to do that. You can actually go online and find out about um, electronics that you can buy and, you know, just solder together and then use it as a high speed trigger for your flashes. Now, for example, there's a clapping switch in, in Germany in a German hardware store that you can actually use. Um, basically what it is, is just a switch that whenever you clap in your hands, it will turn on or off. Um, a device that is attached to it. So that's basically a sound trigger. And uh, if you have something like this, a gun, well, use a sound trigger. Okay, so let's get right into it. Um, I actually opened up a site before that I was checking out. And as you can see, it's called Conrad. Um, because I'm from Germany, I don't know if this translates to any other country but there are shops um, that sell electronics kits and there you can actually check uh, their kits out now what i typed in was kind of like uh, the same thing that a laser trap does and basically uh, what you can see here i think i would take this one uh, is there are LEDs, um, but these are infrared LEDs. So that means you can't see the beam other than in my videos where I use the laser trap. This beam is basically invisible, but um, it works exactly the same as a laser trap. So you can actually um, set this up on a table and then have something go through this part of the of the build right through there uh, and you can actually set these aside i think like i don't know like i'm I'm one meter or something so you don't have, actually have to be that close to trigger something and um, if you take a look at the price it's 27.99 euros i don't know what this translates to uh, us dollars or wherever you might be but uh, it's it's rather cheap, and the way they can make it uh, that cheap is um, kind of like the catch for some of you, because you actually have to assemble it yourself. So that means you will need some soldering skills, or at least know an electrician that can actually solder these parts together for you. But I'm a, I'm an electrician myself, so I know it's just a matter of like i mean this kit here would take me i think 20 minutes half an hour half an hour maybe half an hour so that's not a big deal um 
So let's take a look at some different things here. Um, this thing actually triggers for solid objects that cross the path of the light. And uh, if you remember the, the episode where I triggered the light uh, of the flame, you might want to use something different and um, trying to remember what it was. It's basically Okay, spelled that one wrong. Um, yeah, there we go. That's the one that I was searching for. So basically what this thing is, is a right there, this little part here. This is a light sensitive, well, sensor, a light sensitive resistor. And um, what it does is um, this part right here, if you take a look at my mouse, this thing here is a, I would say it's a transistor. And, oh, okay, now there's another one. So I think that's a operational, how do you call that, an OP? Basically, it's a part that um, will check the signal if there is uh, something detected or not. And if it is detected, it will switch this transistor, which will then switch this relay. And you can see on the relay, which is this big black thing here, um, the switching characteristics of this thing is it needs 12 yeah, it needs 12 volts DC. That's the coil. Basically what it is, is um, there is there are two metal posts inside that are wrapped, uh, that is, uh, you know, inside of a coil. And if the coil gets uh, 12 volts DC, um, those two metal things will, you know, attach together. Well, I don't know how to describe it. You know what I mean. Like if you um, hold your fingers um, a centimeter away from each other and then uh, imagine there's something uh, wrapped around your fingers. Um, and in this tube, um, if you know a power is induced, uh, in this case 12 volts DC, um, those two would come together and then actually close the circuit. So you can see it's switching characteristics is 12 volts DC and uh, it can switch uh, 12 ampere and 112 volts of AC at maximum and 240 volts AC slash 28 volts DC but uh, with only 10 amperes. So, so you can see this big part here is basically the switch. That's what I wanted to, uh, to tell you. And um, yeah, these uh, two things here, like if you take a look at my mouse, this thing and this thing are basically um, things that you can dial in uh, how sensitive this sensor or this entire circuit board are and uh, how fast it will trigger something. So this is pretty handy when it comes to, you know, f triggering flames or anything that is bright. For example, if you trigger a, a lightning bolt or anything like that, that can, that can definitely be um, pretty handy. So Again, it's the catch of assembling it uh, yourself. So it's only 19.99 and you might wanna consider this. So these are two examples for different physical environments to trigger your flashes. And a word of caution though, um, I always used these kind of circuits on my speed lights, which have, I think they have like a switching power of like six volts and i don't know 
how high the voltage of a studio flash is. So be very careful if you try that on a studio flash because they have bigger power than the, uh, the speed lights. So if you just want to use that for speed lights, actually you're good to go. Okay, so what can we actually search for again? Let's try. Let's try this. Yeah, there we go. That's another thing that you can actually use for kind of an object that passes uh, these two sensors. Um, it's basically in most cars nowadays um, and it's activated when you are in, I would say when you are in parking mode. Basically what these two sensors do is uh, this one sensor emits a signal that is a sound signal, but it's not, you cannot hear that sound signal as a human being uh, because of the frequency. It's very high frequency. And um, let's say here is a wall or something, it will then reflect the sound back to the other sensor. And um, then these two sensors in combination with this whole circuit here will actually tell you how far away uh, you are from uh, another car or anything like that if you are in a car. But you can actually use that thing as a trigger method for high-speed photography. I Honestly, I have never used this thing before for photography, um, but you might want to check it out and it's only $17.99. So, I mean, you can't go wrong with this because um, the other trigger that I have, I can show you right now. I actually don't want to do some name dropping, but I, th I think it's like, I think it's necessary here. Um, because I have this one here and you can see, I don't know exactly what the difference is between the, uh, these two, because it's actually the same. But if you take a look at this thing here, Uh, it combines everything that I've just talked about just in one simple build. Um, and you can actually control it via a app and you can actually mount it on a tripod. So that thing is pretty handy. And that's exactly how the app looks. And you actually have lightning mode, which is pretty damn awesome. Uh, if you're out in a summer's day or summer's night where there's a, a thunderstorm coming up, you can actually trigger the flashes or the, the lightning bolts uh, so to say so that's pretty cool and i mean it's 239.99 again this is really the this is really the thing when it comes to high speed photography um because it's it's nice and handy and you can use it on I think it, you can use it on every camera. And as you can see here, you can use it to trigger the camera or you can use it to trigger the flash. So that's pretty pretty cool. Um, yeah, so that's that. I mean, you can actually use every other shop. Um, it's just the fact that I have most of my parts from Conrad. I actually take a look at the site but it doesn't matter where on the world you are, you can actually make the same. So, a little tip though, if you know the site Fiverr, we can actually go to it right now. If you've never seen that site, it's basically a site where you can hire someone to do uh, something for you and the concept is that you give someone five bucks for anything um, let's type in no let's type in soldering because that's what we're gonna do i will draw you filling no that's not it oh i will convert you as nope 
there are people who designed these circuits, uh, which is pretty damn awesome. Ah, perfect. I will soldering components and wires on PCB. So it costs 466. I mean, let's check that out. Nope, I don't want those. So he says he will actually solder you the parts you like. And he does SMT parts, which are extremely small. So you need, you actually need like uh, kind of like a microscope to you to to solder these things but he does normal components as well i mean if that's what you want well there you go just use fiverr and get yourself some guy or girl who does soldering and send them those parts and then get them back and enjoy high-speed photography So that's basically it for today's episode of the High Speed Challenge. I hope you had a blast. Um, I'm no for sure I had. And at this point, as I said, I'm not actually sure if there will be another uh, season two. But um, if a lot of people are interested, I will try to make one. All right, so let's get into soldering. At first, you want to measure your connections to make sure you got the right ones and peel off the insulation of your cables. Then take the soldering iron and slowly heat up the copper wires and attach the lid to it. Always make sure to clean up the soldering iron and then slowly Put the lead on the iron and let it melt over the wire or the pin like here. Just take it slowly. Let it melt the, the right amount and then just take a hot glue to insulate any of your parts. That will help them stick together and isolate them. Just like so. So you saw how to solder and if you still find it difficult or you know you can't manage that, well just go online or uh, find a friend who is an electrician because that's the basics of being an electrician. Every electrician has to solder. I'm sure every electrician knows how to solder. So go out to them and ask them politely and then bring them a beer or something beer is always good or a meal or something like that you know what i mean like it's gotta be a two-way street here okay here you can see a hub for up to four speed lights it has one connector that connects the hub to the trigger and the other four pins are connected to each speed light so it is pretty easy to do it's affordable and it is very easy to use you just plug and play and with the insulation on the back it's pretty safe to use too so there you go so thanks for watching the high speed challenge it's been a pleasure and i really enjoyed making this um, it was more effort than I th first thought, but um, I'm happy I made it and uh, I really hope you enjoyed it. So thank you very much. And if you liked that video or if you found that video somehow interesting or entertaining, please make sure to share it with your friends and family. And maybe I will see you in the next season of the High Speed Challenge. Thank you.